So let's talk now about the rates that these, these values can change. So for an example, uh, let's say I have an object that starts at point A here and ends at point B here, and this distance is 100 meters. So, you know, that's approximately the length of a football field, uh, no matter which kind of football you like. Uh, so, so going from point A to point B uh, can look like very different things depending on the rate that it happens. So in other words, uh, I can have a leisurely walk from point A to point B that might take, you know, a couple minutes. Uh, so that's, you know, uh, maybe, maybe 100 seconds, I guess. That makes it easy, right? Um, maybe it takes me 100 seconds to get from A to B, or maybe, you know, right above this, there is an airplane flying very fast that takes one second to go from point A to point B. I said the airplane was going very fast. What does fast mean? We haven't talked about that yet. Uh, but the point is this displacement from A to B can feel like different things depending on the amount of time it takes. So now we're gonna, um, we're gonna bring time into this. So our variable for time is T um, and it is going to have units of seconds. And generally, our values of t are going to be measured from the start of the problem. So this is not like clock time on the wall. This is not, you know, 3.15 or whatever time it is. This is um, time since, usually it will be since the beginning of the problem, if, if we're doing a problem. Um, there are exceptions to this, but... So in that last example uh, of going from point A to point B, going this 100 meter distance, um, if we're starting at A and going to B, time t equals zero is where we started at A. So we started walking at A and we started our stopwatch, right? And it's counting up from zero as we go from A to B. And right when we get to B, it's going, you know, 98, 99, 100, and I stop it there. And I say, oh, it took me exactly 100 seconds to to go that distance, right? Um, so we have different time values that correspond to every moment in time that we were walking, walking along there. So if we wanted to know, if we wanted to know what our position was 10 seconds after we started or 90 seconds after we started or something like that, uh, we have a variable to talk about that. So that is our, our time t. Right, so, uh, so I said that our our journey from A to B feels different depending on how fast this happens. So that is, that is um, well, you probably have, have guessed where this is going. So we're going to talk about uh, speed and velocity. So our, and let me actually pause here for a moment, and this is going to happen at other points in this class. Uh, in Physics 106, we have to be pretty careful with our vocabulary. There are lots of words that mean kind of similar things in everyday speech that mean very different things in physics. So speed and velocity are the first two things that we're gonna encounter, uh, and they are very closely related, but definitely not the same, the same value, the same variable, and so we, we need to be careful when we, when we talk about this. So first we'll talk about velocity. Um, I will do my best to try not to, <laughs> to, to um, switch them when I talk about these, it happens every once in a while. Um, but if we were doing this in person, uh, I would try. To, I would tell you to try to remind me in lecture to use the right ones. Of course, you can't do this on video. Uh, and similarly, I can't remind you to do to use the right ones when we're discussing this, but I'll do my best in, in office hours or that sort of thing. Okay, anyway, velocity. So our variable for our velocity is v, that's a lowercase v despite how big I drew it. And later on we're going to have velocity in multiple directions. Since our 1D kinematics is all in the x axis direction, I'm going to actually call this vx. So this is our x velocity or the velocity in the x direction. Those are both different ways of, of saying this variable. Um, I'm going to hold on the units for just a second because we're going to look at, at the equation for velocity. So 
our velocity vx is equal to delta x, our displacement, divided by delta t, the amount of time it took to undergo that displacement. Displacement over the, over the time taken. So our units of this are going to be our units of x over our units of t. So that is, uh, that is going to be meters over seconds. So there we go. Our units of velocity are meters per second. Uh, we kind of have a good idea of how far a meter is. So when we're talking about positions, we can say, oh, it's 100 meters away. That's like, I could see it, but I, Will, couldn't throw a ball that far. Um, but it's kind of harder to imagine how fast things are in meters per second. So here's my, here's my rule of thumb. Velocities in meters per second, uh, to get them to miles per hour, you have to multiply by approximately two. Um, really, it's like 2.2 or something like that. But the point is, you can actually use this for checking your answer to problems. So if you get, if you're, if you're solving some problem and it's asking for how fast the car is going and you get an answer of, you know, 20 meters per second, you say, well, oh, is that a reasonable number to get for a car? Well, 20 meters per second times approximately two is equal to about 40 miles per hour. Okay, sure, that's car speed, right? If you got 0.5 meters per second, that would be roughly one mile an hour. That would be pretty slow for a car. Um, if you got 1,000 meters per second, that would be, you know, 2,000 miles an hour. That would be extraordinarily fast for a car. Um, so all of this is, you know, assuming that we know how fast a car goes in miles per hour, which is something we encounter more often at least than how fast a car goes in meters per second. Uh, so there are other, you know, maybe easier or harder to use this for different sorts of objects, but at least you can have some sense of, of whether your numbers are, are making sense within a factor of 10 or something like that. For this equation, there is one sneaky thing about it that I want to address, and that is this. We can, we, we can and will, in a little bit, encounter situations where our velocity is changing. Uh, we'll get to that in the next lecture. So if our velocity is changing, we can still use this equation, but the v that we get on the left here is going to be the average velocity. So really, really for this equation, we should say that this is the average velocity. And if, if we are moving at this constant rate, at a constant velocity, then the average is just that same constant value. So it will always work as long as we understand that in this equation, this is the average velocity and not you know, the velocity at different points in time when it may be changing. Um, it sh my hope is that you know, in, a, in a week or so, you guys will have a good idea of whether the velocity is changing or not in a problem. Okay, now I will erase. I'm gonna leave this up here though. So we're going to do a little bit of algebra to get um, to get our next result, and that is uh, I'm going to multiply. Well, first I'm going to switch which side these are on, and then I'm going to multiply both sides by delta t. So what I'm going to end up with is a delta x on one side and a v times delta t on the other side. Okay, so delta x, as we said before, is x final minus x initial, and delta t is t final minus t initial. Like we said, t initial is almost, almost always just zero. And therefore, t final is the only time in our problem that is like how much time has gone by. So this is just equal to our time t as long as we start counting at t equals zero. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do, this is a bracket, not a divide by, just so we're totally clear. So this is equal to a t, the vx stays, and I'm going to add x initial to both sides. So I have x initial plus this equals x final. So this is the first of our kinematic equations, and I guess this one we can call the, um, they don't really have names, we'll call this the position equation for constant 
velocity. So remember, in the last thing I said, you know, v equals delta x over delta t as long as either that's the average velocity or the velocity is not changing, it is constant. So we will shortly have equations where it's not for constant velocity, you'll know when that is. Um, and this equation only works for when there is a constant velocity. Okay, why is this useful? Well, this is cool because if we know where we started and our constant velocity, how fast we are moving, we can plug in any time and end up with our position at whatever that time is. So we can plug in different values of t and find where we are at those different times. Um, or, you know, similarly, if we knew where we ended up and where we started, we could solve for how long it took to get there, as long as we know how fast we're going. Um, so, you know, we don't have to solve for x final, we can solve for any of these as long as we know the other three variables. Okay, to end with today, here is a really quick little example. So let's say I, um, or unnamed person over here, is holding a stopwatch of some sort. Not a, not a pumpkin. Um, holding a stopwatch, and they are measuring a person that is running to the right. And we'll say they're running to the right with a constant velocity of five meters per second. So it's, again, about 10 miles an hour, 10 or 11 miles an hour. And they start three meters away from me. So the question is, uh, how far away, well, I should, I should say, this is their position at time t equals zero when we start our stopwatch. So maybe we're standing here, the starting line of the race is here, and they start running and we start the watch at the same time or something, something like that. So, uh, so what is their distance from you at time t equals four seconds? So we have all of the, the pieces for this. We can measure our distance by thinking about our axis, right? So if we draw, we don't have to draw our axis and number line, but it certainly doesn't hurt in this case. So this is our plus x direction. Uh, this is position three meters. And this is, of course, the origin, position zero meters. So x initial for them is equal to three meters. So our, our equation, remember, is x final equals x initial plus vt. So x final equals x initial, that is three meters, uh, plus v, that is five, meters per second times four seconds. I guess if I'm putting my units in, I should put all my units in. So I end up with my seconds cancel. I have five times four equals 20 meters plus three meters. And my answer then is 23 meters. So at when my stopwatch says four seconds, they will be 23 meters away from me. Okay, there's, that, that is the end of this example. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, in doing the example, I remember there's one other thing that I should mention, <laughs> and that is the difference between velocity and speed. Okay, so our velocity, remember, was delta x over delta t, and I didn't mention this at the time, but Delta x, our displacement, we know can be positive or negative, right? We can end up to the right of where we started or to the left of where we started. So our velocity can be also positive or negative. So a positive velocity is an object moving to the right. That is, it is moving at a rate that is increasing its position x with time. And if it's moving to the left, it has a negative value of the velocity. That is, its position is decreasing with time moving you know, in the negative direction on the number line. Okay, so velocities can be positive or negative. Speed, as it is used in physics, uh, speed just means the absolute value of our velocity at a particular moment in time. So for our person moving to the right at five meters per second, 
their velocity is plus five meters per second. Their speed is also five meters per second. If we have an object moving to the left, its velocity is going to be negative, but the speed is still going to be positive. So speeds are always, always positive numbers. When we get into 2D kinematics, we're going to have to add a little bit to the definition of speed. Uh, it's still always going to be a positive number, it's just that we have to worry about the y direction also. Uh, so more on that later, uh, but that is, that is a good place to end for now.